right, guys, what's going on? Legacy Project, we got an extra, extra, super duper special guest. The man, hold on, hold on. The man who created these. Oh, you know we are fans of these. Please introduce yourself, my friend. Nathan from the Slantboard Guy. How are you? Thanks for having me. He is the slant board guy. He doesn't have an identity anymore. Of course, we're here. How you doing, Bryce? How we doing, everyone? <sighs> Bryce is uh, Bryce is crushing it, man. How many teams? We got three full teams now. Working on more. Yeah, three. I and I, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. So anyway, it's a beautiful week. We're here um, doing what we love. And obviously, we love training. We love everything. We love nutrition. Ooh. We love the new chocolate caramel outright bar, which is in stock now. Or, or very soon, if it depends on this video goes up. Yeah, question is how fast is it? Oh, it's, it's as soon as it should land Thursday. Should land Thursday in Vegas. Let's put it live. Or hopefully early, which never happens anymore. So today is a really awesome opportunity to be able to not only talk about business, starting a business based on a need, but a simple, simple yet complex invention. It's a slant board but yet this is the guy who brought it to market okay with patents and all that we could talk about that but also its application and then we can nerd out and talk about training which is what we love to do and we filmed a lot of content this morning talking about everything from your vmo to valgus to preventing injuries just crazy stuff so without further ado how did you and why did you Bring the world what I feel is the best, best thing next to mini bands and mini hurdles for knee health, and that is the slant board. Yeah, so it's a it's a little bit of a crazy story. I um I've got limited ankle mobility. I um broke my ankle when I was eleven, um, playing rugby league at home, and I just I literally couldn't squat. Um, I didn't have the mobility to be able to get into a squat. Um, went to a fitness camp. This is, a, this is a quick version for you anyway. Um, <laughs> went to a fitness camp and there was guys there just doing some big, big numbers, double body weight, back squat, and I was sitting in the corner minding my own business and I couldn't squat. So uh, the guy that was running the camp said to put a bit of timber underneath my feet or a plate um, that I'd seen. Timber would be wood for you Americans out there. A bit, a bit of lumber. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I did that and we um, I felt a little bit better and then I got another piece. And I was just in, in my own little corner doing a couple little goblet squats. And yeah, I, after I left the camp, it was a five-day camp. I said I could probably just go back to work and, and build something that we can stand on. Um, so I went to work and I um, made a couple that were pretty rough at the time. And the guys rang up and said, can we pick them up? And I, I, they said, yeah, come, let's, let's pick them up. And they were just like, these are, these are unreal. Like, these things are mad. And I was, <laughs> was kind of like looking at them just going, oh, I was a little bit embarrassed. They were, they were pretty rough. They were the first, very first ones. And then, yeah, after that, a few more and a few more. And there was no social media back then for me anyway. And um, then I know that there was a, a lady, at, I think she's in Redondo Beach, um, Movement Maestro. Oh, yeah. Um, Shanti reached out and she's like, oh, I've seen, seen someone using your board and they put me onto you. How can I get one? And I'm like, oh, man, I didn't have boxes we didn't have anything and i was still building them on my driveway so i just put it in bubble wrap and and hope for the best that it'd get to the u.s and it did and and then from there the rest is history it's been brought to market and yeah what year was that 2020 20 you didn't have social media in 2020 so no. literally wait hold on hold on hold on hold on. so you started this runaway success that is by the way going to be at tigerfitness.com because I love them so much. It's already at Legacy at Carbon. You started this during a pandemic. How was it starting a business during the pandemic? Actually, I think it might have helped you because a lot of people are probably using these at home, right? Yeah, look, everyone, we thought that. Like, I mean, the, the whole journey's been a bit crazy, but we thought the pandemic did help us. But then, you know, after the pandemic, we're just as busy. So um, it, it probably helped us right at the very start. But then it probably helped us more as people using them at home and then we opened back up for for trade and for everything else to go back to the kind of semi-normal that it could um then they'll obviously go into the gym and saying or taking them with them or, or telling the gym owners that they should get some slam boards so we got probably busier after the pandemic but yeah that's we had we had no social media um they've got social media got a website we didn't even have a website my wife was <laughs> i love it writing the orders in a little black book at, Oh, at midnight. I'm um, trying to figure out who's paid, who hasn't paid, and who is this person. 
And then, um, yeah, it kind of all just fell into place like that. So. How many hours a day do you work? How many hours is there in a day? I love uh, it. Yeah, lots. Like, and especially being in Australia, it's, it's you know, like we, we do our full day at work and then obviously the US comes online and, you know, 90% of our business is here in the US, so. You, you always take my calls at the weirdest. That's like, hey, um, or you'll be, I'll be up. I'll be up. I'm like, whoa, because we, we, um, we, we do business together. And, you know, so we have to schedule calls. And I'm not going to ask my, my chief technology officer to wake up when he, you know, in the middle of the night. I'll do it. But, eh, Jason's. I, I'm not going to make Jason do it. And it's, um, he's like, no, I'll make it work. I'm like, isn't that like 4 a.m. your time or 2 a.m. your time? You're like, yeah, mate, <laughs> no problem. Yeah. I, I, think, I think it's profound that everyone I talk to and I talk to, I have the opportunity to talk to a lot of successful people. Hell, everybody does. Just go into a sauna at Lifetime Fitness and you'll talk to more millionaires than you've ever... I'm not, I'm not even playing. I've met more millionaire connections in saunas at Equinox and Lifetime. Like, buy a membership there just to network. I'm not even playing. Don't even lift. Just go sit in the sauna. And if you don't die <laughs> from being in the sauna all day, I've had some enlightening conversations with very smart people. So, what, the one thing I noticed about entrepreneurs is... It usually happens by accident and just being willing to do something, right? Like you saw a need and you're like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go out on the limb and I'm going to build this because you're, you're a builder by trade, right? Yeah. Man. Yep. Yeah. Like it, was, it was, it was super hard for me to do because, you know, I've got three kids, a family to support. My wife wasn't working at the time. We just moved states. So it was all very new to us um, and we hadn't run a business. So, you know, you imagine going from the last 20 years of having a constant paycheck and it was good money too and just, uh, you know, that it's coming in every month and so then let that go and just jump into a business where you go, well, geez, are we going to sell this many samples next month or the month <laughs> after? And <laughs> challenge after challenge comes every month. I'm sure like you would know yourself that running the business is, you know, you feel like you get on top of it and then something else will happen. There's, there's always another issue or there's something else that you've got to challenge yourself to, um, to overcome. So... Yeah, it was, it was super challenging. It still is super challenging. We've got different challenges now than what we did back then. But yeah, it's, um, it's never ending. Running a business, I always say, is like pedaling a bicycle uphill on the, on the, high, the lowest gear. You know, the one where you're pedaling and the bike barely moves. Shh. Isn't that gear one? That's gear one, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're basically on gear one and you're just pedaling and pedaling and pedaling and the bike goes nowhere. And that's pretty much the last, up until about five years ago, that was 20 years of my life. And, um, but then something hits and something sticks and it becomes something you do. So now what would you say? Um, so your business starts going, so you're, you're shipping things online. You're starting to grow, um, to scale a business of this magnitude. Like you start by making one slant board in your driveway <laughs> and, and now you have, not only do you have the, I love the wood ones, but you have this cool metal one, right? So I'm just hold this the whole time. I, I love this. By the way, he gifted this to me. Um, his whole family's at my house right now. So if you hear any yelling, we just put a wrestling mat or upstairs. body slamming. And I think Thomas is is wrestling the other kids. Um, so we had him sign a waiver <laughs> before they came in here. But scaling a business. So a lot of people don't understand when you start a business. The first thing I do now, which I had no idea what I was doing when I started Salvation, is you think to yourself, okay, I'm doing this. How do I scale? So how have you scaled this business? Yeah, look, it hasn't been easy. Um, I think, like I said, we go back to the start. It was the driveway, just myself and the wife on the driveway. Um, then it was one, one warehouse. Then it was two warehouses, um, you know, and then it was the next thing, was, you know, obviously I made contact with you and, and now we've got our stuff coming out of your warehouse, um, which was the next step. And, and hopefully the next step is manufacturing in the US and, and we can keep it here. and um, But, yeah, I think it's the question was how did I scale, but I think it's just been one step at a time. I think if I thought too much into it and tried to go too big too quick or try and get someone else to help me, I think it wouldn't have been the right time. So, yeah, I just, I'm just i just trying to be in, build relationships that are super important to me. Um, and just even coming for a visit like this, it's not an initial return on investment. It's not like I come here to sell you 100 slant boards. Um, but it's We're going to sell way more than 100 slant boards from this yeah. video alone. I, you don't even have to tell me to promote the slant board. Like, we were just talking. We have 
And I hope she watches this. We have I can't wait to see her play. We have this six foot one or six foot two basketball player. Oh, yeah, I mean, she's taller than both of us. And yeah. she already has a knee injury. And the 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 progress we've made. If we didn't have slam boards for these kids who come in present with injuries, we would not be able to address what we need to address. And also for longer limbed athletes, you got Alan Bishop over at the University of Houston, and he will put these seven foot eight basketball players who could never squat. These guys would never be, if, if they squatted, like can you imagine them in a full squat, their knees would go over their heads oh, with yeah. their long ass femurs. But Alan Bishop is just putting these kids on slant boards and I'll take a begin like I'll take, you know, a lot, some of my training clients that I train at carbon are just normal dudes who just don't want to die. Just want to get in better shape, want to be able to play with their kids, want to live into their seventies, eighties and nineties. And I guarantee you, I cannot load them on a back squat. I cannot load them on a front squat. Men and I put them on a slant board. I put a kettlebell in the front of their hands and they can go and do a deep squat, full range of motion. I'm talking dudes who've injured their knees from playing football in high school, from wrestling. And, and Bryce has seen these people. And so we train everything at Legacy from youth athletes. I'm talking six to seven year olds. Yeah, I just put to it. 60 to 70 year olds. But that's. Like we were talking about earlier, like that's the greatest part of it is it fixes so many things so fast, so quickly, just because of obviously the way you're positioned. But you can put a seven year old on it if he at least knows how to move. It's going to be a perfect squat majority of the time. You put a 70 year old on it. It will be a perfect squat. Yeah. I've never had somebody who wasn't able to gobble it, who wasn't able to slam board squat. Besides me. It t- you slam board squat fine. He has a fake knee. But you have you have this beautiful thing where you're able to load your quads. And the thing is, nobody is squatting for hamstrings or glutes. It hits them, but not really that effectively. If you want to hear hamstrings, do an RDL. Do a leg curl. Do something. Do do a, what is it, the, the slides on your bottom of your feet. Do, do a partner hamstring curl. Yeah, do, do a Nordic curl, exactly. But if I want to hit my quads with a squat... And I'm not too worried about like, you know, let's say I'm not worried about, let's say I'm a bodybuilder, which I, I technically am. If, I, if I'm doing a squat, I'm doing it to build some big ass quads. So why wouldn't I make it so potential ankle and calf mobility issues aren't an issue and I'm able to fully load my quads. And if I'm an athlete, not only do I, I'm going to do squats because on the field, I don't have a slam board, right? But let's say I am an athlete, I'm able to complement my regular squat with a fuller range of motion, working through an even more exaggerated range of motion to prevent that injury, to strengthen the VMO. There is no reason, and I say this, not, dude, I was saying this before I made a dime on slam boards, and I'll tell you what, I don't make a dime right now, but I, I, I guarantee I'm going to sell some slam boards because I love them. I want to make, I want, I want to make millions of dollars with this man to make millions of dollars because these are, he's the first to market every other slam board out there. I'm sorry. It's like, well, you could just build your own. Okay, cool. Well, you could also go and bake your own bars. It's not going to be as good as mine. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like the thing is this guy innovated. This is the fun part. He innovated shit. You got to support innovation. So when you look at like, oh, well, I have my X version of slam board. I was like, you're a copycat bitch. Just like the people who copy the outright bar, you are an untalented, unimaginative copycat bitch who's just riding someone else's nuts to the top because you couldn't create something yourself. And I hope you violate his patent and I hope we sell enough of these things to be able to sue you. Okay, that's what I'm getting at is that this is ingenuity. It's like, yeah, you can build your own. You know what else you can do? You can put plates on your feet. Is it at the proper angle? Is it going to be, you know, is it, is it going to be reinforced? It's going to be as stable as what this guy makes. And chances are when you buy a cheap knockoff, you're going to get just that, a cheap knockoff. For example, every bar I make, I t- every batch I make, I test. We do not, these, these ingredients, this isn't from Genesis, which is a nutritional program that does this. This is from Microback Labs in Pennsylvania. They do all the testing. I'll tell you what. You can trust what's in there. Just like you got the patent guy right here, the guy who has the provisionals, has all the patents. What are you going to trust to not break under you and snap your shit up when you have load on your back? Are you going to trust the guy who created the slant board or are you going to trust a no-talent copycat-ass clown? I'll say it for you. I told you. I told you. But I think, and I've seen it with what? What did the dude have on yesterday? I think 315 yeah. on the safety bar with him, and he was easily over like 215 pounds. And he died. No, no, I mean, okay. no, hundred percent lift. 
Oh, but sh- I mean, that thing can hold a shit ton of weight. Yeah, you could put like ten Lizzos on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. hey, with, with Queen Latifah on her shoulders. <laughs> oh my god! But is it so? It's rated ten Lizzos. Yeah, yeah, oh my god! What is that? That's got to be like test. that's got to be like two metric tons, right? I have no idea. How much does Lizzo weigh? Do you think? I have. She's got to be three fifty. Tree fifty. Tree fifty. About tree fifty. Shit, probably. I'm going two eighty five. Would you smash? No. No, I probably Sorry. would. You if would. I wasn't married, oh, yeah. If I was married, I'd lower my standards. Not going to lie. <laughs> Not going to lie. Like, it depends what time it is. Like, if you're at the club. Here's ADD and ADHD right here. <laughs> so, if, if, you're, if you're at the club and, it's, and it closes at 2 a.m., it's like 145. But what are you doing at the club? I'm telling you, I'm saying if I'm single and I'm not 42. I know, but you pop 42 everywhere. is too old to be going to the club. Then you're just the creepy old guy. But, like, if you're at the club. And it's like 145. You got 15 minutes. All the good ones are taken. You got Lizzo standing there. That becomes a 10. Not on the Richter scale. That becomes a 10. <laughs> so you're, you're going to, I'm telling you, man, if it's late enough and, and, you know, it's been a while. Let's say it's been like a month since right. you've, you know. You're taking it home. There's no rules then. Yeah. This is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. There's nobody here who wouldn't. Like, you guys are lying. Like, she's a decently attractive large woman. She's a BBW. That's they call them, right? Like Drake said, yes. like Roman BBW. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, slap boards are good. Next. <laughs> <laughs> this, yep. There's yeah, That's exactly what happens. That's ADD. exactly what you wanted to no, do. Go, going back to your statement with bodybuilders. What does, do you think it adds more muscular activation for them specifically to all parts of the quad besides just the VMO? Is this for me or him? That's for both of you. Yes. I have definitely seen quad development and growth since I've incorporated the slant board. And I used to be the guy who, you know, would wear, con- and, and also people like, can I just get squat shoes? It's a very, very, very. It's um, a drastic difference. It, it's a drastic. You're looking at high heel. You're looking at silhouettes versus flats. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's- if you cross dress, which I do. Shit. <laughs> I can't stop. You, you man, you're going after it today. Well, I mean, here's the thing. He's in person. Usually these are like remote. Yeah. So it's like, it's because you have to listen. There's a lag. Like when you're in person, you get the chemistry. And I know like he's my bro. So it's like, it's like hanging out with bros. Not saying that, you know, uh, Coach Moffitt isn't my bro, but I've never met the guy. Right. So like, I'm not going to sit there and put him off with my bad jokes. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. I know. I mean, because these are professionals. But uh, I'm loving the joke. Oh, yeah, to be honest. So it's, does Lizzo. So it's you know what else she loves? Subway. I'm sure she eats a lot of Subway. She should be getting into the outright bars. The out, she, I, she, she, did a, I, she would be able to pay my mortgage off if she ate outright bars. How many do you think she could put down? <laughs> anyway, Bryce, what are you saying? Yes, I think bodybuilders should squat with elevated heels. But uh, now, like we were talking about, why use it? Like, there's so many people that and we I see it every day there. I see it every day at every gym that I've been to that will not go on a slant board because they think it's just not the right thing to do. They don't think it. They don't understand it. They don't, they don't know what it is. I think that's like the biggest thing for like the entire population is why use it. So Bryce, remember the first time you slept with a guy. So what I'm saying is. What I'm saying is you got to try it before you knock it, right? So. Like him trying the outright bar. Yeah. So, so here's the deal. If you're a bodybuilder and you have that mind-muscle connection and you squat with, with a slam board, you will notice that you are hitting more quads. You will notice there is less strain in the hips. You know, we were talking earlier about how many bodybuilders and powerlifters I know who present with hip issues later on. Now, I'm not saying not to squat with flat feet. I'm not saying not to squat barefoot. I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to reach a full squat and sit in it for an extended period of time. What I'm saying is that to augment that or to get to a position where you can do that movement, why would you not want to work your VMO and your other muscles that are hindered by potential calf or ankle instability or inflexibility, immobility, when you can use this tool to help you strengthen your knees, get better quads, target more of your VMO, 
when you can use this and then graduate to a full squat, you know, and then also when you get to a full squat, be able to augment that full squat or as someone with lopsided hips, if you have hip issues, you will, if you do a regular squat and you have hip issues, you will feel nothing but tightness in your, in your, in your hip and your soreness afterwards will not be in your quad. It will be in your adductors and abductors. You use a slam board, suddenly those hip issues are taken away. So for bodybuilders, especially even beyond athletes, so I'm even going to change my tune on that. I think this is actually more suited for bodybuilders than any other people who lift weights because of our intentional focusing on muscle groups such as the quads. Shit, you answered all my questions. I, I'm really excited. I get excited and, about things like these. Like but, I said, like before the slant board, we literally just had put plates in your feet. Plate and one, well, and also like for injury prevention, for valgus, for adductor abductors. Well, the, you had you had mini bands and you had hurdles. Yeah, and that I mean. Now go on the other side of the spectrum. Go to the prehab and the PT and, you know, ocu or any kind of therapy, and you start looking at, you know, I mean, shit, all you have to do is flip it around, and you can literally get any calf stretch, any soleus stretch, gastroc, whatever you want, and you can do it in a variety of movements and make it 10 times harder, by the way, with the band attachment that is put on the new one. Yes. And that makes everything 100% harder, but it hits every spectrum. Like whether bodybuilder, athlete, PT, it doesn't really matter. 90s year old, five year old, doesn't matter. Anyone can use it. The question is, people just have to continue to be educated on how to use it in a variety of ways. So basically, don't care who you buy it from. If you buy it from someone who retails it, if you buy it from me, if you buy it from him, don't care. Get a slant board. Period. The end. That's, that's it. it. It has so many uses. Um, but speaking of which, you've had a chance to travel around and talk to these really influential people, right? Like these people who like, I, I first used your slam board at Mark Bell's Mark Bell's gym um, with Encima. And it was me and Chris Jones. Chris actually bought one. He liked it so much. So you've traveled around, you've met all these awesome people, not saying they're your favorite, but which visit, which person um, other than me, of course, um, which person Stuck out in your head most is, holy shit, this was a remarkable trip, a remarkable visit, and I'm so happy to be on this earth right now. There's got to be two. I can't, I can't you narrow can, it down to You one. go seven. Like, I, I don't know how much battery we got on this thing, no, but no, I mean, no. you could do it. No, I, um, look, Mark Bell, um, yeah, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was pretty nervous walking in there. Because he had his shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> no, to, to, to anyone, to anyone in the industry. I mean, yeah. you walk into his gym and he's got the big yeah. wall there with, with everyone that's been in the podcast. And um, you know, I rocked up there. I think it was the day that he was podcasting Sean Baker and Stan Efforting. So that was um. God you know, damn! Self, what so a yeah. cast! Yeah, yeah, that's a holy shit! You you know, went on the greatest day ever. It's like they're pinching myself, you know, just like Jesus. You were the carnivore guy who I I always you know we we I, I love him. But obviously, I don't agree with hundred percent because you know I like yeah. cake, and um, <laughs> and, and then I sell a I fucking box. I sell literally yeah. ants, and, and um, efforting yeah. is a fucking legend, and he is massive. He's strong. Yeah. He's the rhino. Yeah, he's a beast. Have so you ever seen a rhino to be named after the rhino? Like it's a, it's a huge animal, and he's a huge he's human not being. Like, he's he's <laughs> not like named like the chipmunk. You know, he's the rhino. Okay, go ahead, sir. No, no. So that was that was that was amazing. That was um, probably one of the pinch me moments. Um, just he's just it's the mecca for me, um, and for him to just like the the equipment and just to know that he's using it, um, yeah, that's an amazing feeling for something that you've created. Mm -hmm. um, and the second one is the guy that I'm going to visit after this, which is um, Jeff Lavecchio. He's in Chesterfield. I I got a nickname for him, the Mayor of Chesterfield. He knows everyone there. Are you going to be there Saturday? I will. Yeah, you, <sighs> you know, you know, if I can roll on by, just stop in, say hi, because I would like to shake that man's hand. Yeah. I will be in. I'll, it's a funny story. He's going to Chesterfield, Missouri. I'm going to be in Chesterfield for a soccer tournament. Out of all places for there to be soccer, Chesterfield. <laughs> There's a Lifetime Fitness out there, too. I looked it up. They have a good sauna. We'll go in the sauna. Yeah, we'll go Schwitz. So, so what was it about... What was it about him that, what, what was his aura? What was his, 
What about him? You're like, oh, wow, this guy's amazing. Because Mark Bell, we could pretty much, he's Mark Bell, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mark Bell, he's Mark <clears throat> Bell. Yeah. Um, Jeff, Jeff trains um, college athletes, junior athletes, um, and the amount of time and effort that he puts into young athletes um, from all his lessons and learnings mm -hmm. from what he went through in the NHL world. Um, he just dedicates pretty much all of his time and effort to that. So I think that's massive. That resonates with me a lot. I just think there's not enough people educating today's youth, mm -hmm. um, hence <coughs> stuff around the slam board. Um, and I just think if there was more people doing that, there'd be um, kids achieving more in sport. And, you know, I think the pinnacle is to get to a stage where there's no kid that's missing out on what they could have achieved in sport if they didn't get injured. Uh, yeah, so, I mean that's if if that's yeah. what we could fix, that that would be the pinnacle of, of of anything. And with what he does, it just it just resonates. That just you know, that's something that I would love to to be able to replicate what he's got there. And so I can't wait. Hopefully, you can come in on Saturday and we can organise to catch up and you can just see his space and see what he does. But yeah, at least give him a follow on his Insta. You, you see what he's about. He's, yeah, it's, um, good. And then I don't know. There was this guy in Tennessee. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know who he was, but. Oh, his name is Bryce Beal. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, um, yeah, it was awesome coming to meet you. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm just a fan. I, I mean, so we, we train kids, and I also train adults. Not as much. I mean, you're looking at a 100 to 1 ratio of kids to adults. But, you know, I think that, I, I, again, like when you really believe in something, it's easy to sell it. It's easy to promote it, and it's easy to teach people how to use it. So, I mean, there's certain things we have that people send us that we utilize. Um, but I'll tell you what, the, the one thing that we need more of is slant boards. And that's yep. why I'm happy for the shipment to come. Like, we want two per rack. We got we eight racks. We want 16. two per rack. Yep. Well, it's, I mean, crap, it's the easiest way to do anything. Like, in, in every regards of, like, ankle, knees, and hips. Yeah. Literally, it, like, we use it every single day, every single session, whether you're 7 or 18. 20, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And it's beyond advantageous for that aspect of, like, the athletic, like he was talking about for sport, and it just makes life so much easier to teach fine and teach and fine-tune movements that normally people can't fix. Yeah, and being that, for some reason, we're training basketball players exclusively now, it seems. <laughs> like, these kids are tall, and for us to be able to develop their squat by utilizing the slant, I mean, it's just, if you go into a gym and they don't have a slant board, walk like, away. walk out. But that, I mean, look at what the girls did on, uh, did, 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 what was that? Uh, 75 kilo yeah. uh, kettlebell? Last Wednesday. Yeah. All, uh, all of them, I think all of them. Everybody did. Well, then, because, so what, what, what you'll notice, I don't know if you noticed this, um, but so you have, usually have an alpha in every group whether it's female or male. I actually think one of the basketball team um, has multiples. I think we have like two or three with the one team we train, the one we do remotely. Oh, yeah, 100%. So we have two or three, but, but in our – so we have one girl with one of our teams we train, and she's the one who came off an injury and will still outwork everybody. So she sets the standard. So once she got it, everybody got it. We'll see the same thing with sled drags. I remember the first time we put our lacrosse girls on the sleds. Oh, yeah. And one plate, they couldn't do it. One girl rocks up like four plates on the thing. Next thing you know, everybody's doing four plates. Yeah. And I'm like, this is monkey see, monkey do. This is tribalism at its best. Let's go. That's why we, like, people come in and they're like, well, could you do private training sessions? I'm like, if you want to be held back, nothing's better than being with your team. Yeah. I love training it, our teams, man. I, I love training our teams. I love training our groups because you... You just, and you said it better than I probably could. You see everyone level up. Yes. And every, every single time, like, I know I have, not you know, a new middle scorer, uh, I think, last week. And I had one of our current ones who comes in all the time. Yep. And you saw the new kid try to go up just a little bit. And not in a, a bad way, just, you know, it was like, I think, three pounds heavier with a kettlebell. And he leveled up. Remember that one time we put Cammy in with the linebackers? Oh. So, Cammy, we have linebackers. They're doing, like... 235 on deadlift or something. Cammy rocks up, puts on 285. Oh. Next thing you know, everybody's doing 325. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, well, it, think about the uh, when we did the speed deadlifts, power trucks. Oh, God, yeah. She looked better than everyone else. 
Well, I mean, and these were starters on potential state champion team. They'll be top five. Yeah, but you you got to bring up conditioning. I'm sorry. Oh, you, yeah. you have to bring up. By the way, that girl has the most craziest, excuse my language, fucking endurance I've ever seen in my entire life. With strength. She can lift the same amount after a two-hour session as she can at the beginning. I've never seen anything like it. But then again, my son, I think it's just just over the years. Like Thomas literally goes from wrestling to soccer. Three times four, a week. Three times a week. That's insane. Wrestling practice alone, all three of us it's would be on dang. the floor crying for a month. <laughs> wrestling practice is known as the hardest. It's terrible. And, um, but yeah, I think it's, so, so, so back to kind of honing this in. So what's your experience? So you actually, so your experience, you're, you you were a builder, right? Yep. So that's your trade. So what is your experience with athletics, with training and everything? Cause I kind of want to get into some nerd stuff. Ooh. Yeah. Like I, I don't look, I've always been into sport. Um, and I, I what'd you play? Rugby league. Okay. We, we, in, in a, that's yeah. a real sport. It yeah, is. is a real sport. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. I mean, we're not going to. Now, I like Australian rules football, too. Yeah, their shorts are too tight. For me. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a fan of the I'm a bodybuilder, so, so yeah. I mean, I have you, you beat. Like I literally put an, little stuff. I put an eye patch of short little, hey, watch it. Oh, my it. God. Man over there. No, I mean, you're talking to a man who wears Speedos. So, um, literally an eye patch over my, over my junk, you know? It's like. <laughs> I remember one time I was at a show. This dude put him on backwards. It was like a G-string. It's hilarious. You, how do you... Never mind. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. All I know is that... Um, so, so ru- how long did you play rugby? Oh, from 6 to 16. Oh, that's, that's a good amount of time. Any injuries to show from it? Yeah, broken ankle at 11. Oh, that's Holy it. You came shit. off easy. Yeah. Yeah. Bryce and I played the, the weak-ass padded football, and we both yep. came out walking. Oh, we both came out fucked <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it was terrible. But <laughs> you were obviously better than us. <laughs> yeah, but you said it earlier. With what do you think the difference is between essentially rugby that you see and athletics over here? Like you said, the injury rate was. Oh, our injury, injury rate in Australia is is phenomenal. Like it is it is going up twofold, threefold each year, year on year, and it's the development of the player. Um, we're, we're building bigger, stronger bodies, but we're not training. Like our, our game is developing so much over year on year on year, um, and we're we're building these bigger bodies, but we're not training any different to what we were twenty years ago. Um, so yeah, I mean that's the same problem here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, but at least at least over here, I think you know you, you get a lot of the people that have their personal coaches, or you have coaches that are going out to find that the one percent. That makes them stand out more than. I mean, one one percent could be standing on a Bosu ball. <laughs> no, I'm not. Look, and we've I, seen the dumbest thing. Yeah, and it well, it's uh, funny because how advanced rugby is. Because you look at like American football, rugby with tackling and contact was brought over here to mm-hmm. essentially make the sport safer, but yet injury rates are higher. Like you're saying, so it's it's interesting how those two kind of interfold, but at the same time. It all goes back to development, like all three of the conversations we've had with people, Mark, over the past, what, two weeks, three weeks? It's no one wants to do any of the small shit right. Well, like the development of kids has gone completely sideways. Yeah, I, I think what's funny is you look at what we do and we might do 25 to 30 percent strength. I think um, I think Zach was the most weight intensive. I think he said like 35 to 40 percent. But if you go into high school weight room, for example, Ravenwood, where my kids go, I coached wrestling there. The weight room is literally a weight room. There's no space. It's just a bunch of equipment, a lot of beautiful equipment. But, you know, you get a, a high school strength coach in there. He's going to do, he's going to train them like bodybuilders or power lifters. Um, we might do 25, 30% of our program yep. as strength, but the rest of it is injury prevention, movement, reaction, plyos, med ball, you know, mini hurdles, mini bands, and slant board is incorporated in probably, Every I'd say slant, slant board can be movement prep, pillar prep. It can be Pre, strength. It can be everything. It can be everything. So we have, but a lot of these guys, you know, you go to a high school, not only you have one. So when I was, cause the problem with coaching high school is when you're in a controlled environment, like, like at legacy or like at, you know, any, any of the guys, Moffitt, or any of the guys we, we've had Zach on here, 
right? Like it's a controlled environment. We know our equipment. We can give that personalized service. When I was coaching at Ravenwood, you know, I had 40, 50, 60 kids per me. And when Cammy had soccer, I had no help. Because Cammy was my assistant coach. My daughter was my was coaching her own team. But who is so, yet overqualified? Yeah, she's overqualified to even train in our gym. Like it is what it is. Not our gym, but the gym that our gym is in. Yes. So so the, the the issue is like high school coaches, even if you get a Zach or a Mark or a Bryce, you know, or a Moffitt, you know, at the end of the day, as soon as I turned my back to help someone else. The kid's going to load weight and do quarter reps. And I got to the point by the end of the season, everyone knew I'm going to catch them sooner or later. And I did. But it took me four months to really get that team where the form was perfect. This year, I'm not there. Word on the street, their form sucks again. Why? Because they're dudes. And dudes are ego-based. And dudes just want to load weight. Or it's either they want to load weight or they're too lazy to do a full rep. You want to know why? Why? Full rep squats suck. They hurt. They tax you. They're tiring. They suck. It's much easier to do a half rep, load the weight, look good for the gram, and you're done. I'd rather see 135 done to the floor than 335 done to above parallel. Period. I, that's, yeah. that's, that's the whole stigma around it, isn't it? Like if you, if you go and ask a 15, 16, 17-year-old that goes to the gym or is in sport, and you ask them anything about the gym, what's the first question they ask you? How much do you bench? How much can you bench? <laughs> How much can you squat? Or what, what, what right. SARMs do you think I should yeah. take? Oh, but, God. But, you know, so that, that's where I get back. And whether, whether it's the slam board or it's not the slam board, just, it comes back to another education piece. And I just think, you know, the greatest, the greatest thing about the slam board is that you can hop on it with body weight. Yep. And, and, and you feel, you feel them, their muscles engage as soon as you hop on it. And then, you know, you can add weight, but you, you're not... Yeah, do You're not putting yourself out there for any other injury. So, oh, yeah. do it, do it for thirty seconds as many reps as possible. It's terrible, <laughs> and then and then hop on a bike and then go do something else. And I kind of did that to a team a couple of days ago, and it's terrible. And I did it myself. I did just the squats. If I hop on a bike, I might die today. Yeah, um, but there's no risk to injury, right? No, like when you do that, no. no. And that's what pe- like that's the greatest thing. Like I have a fake knee. I'm like probably the most. <clears throat> uninclined person to be able to squat and I feel fine doing it on actual slant board. I feel 10 times better. Like I know my, my calf, everything is jacked up ankle and I can get as close to full as range of motion that I possibly can pain free. Yeah. So what do you see as the next step in development in kind of sport, right? Yeah. The slant board, you have all these cool things, velocity-based training. You get to see all these cool facilities. Is there anything people are using, like, for example, um, the, the velocity-based training, VBT, I believe it is, yep. Bryce? Um, we're looking into that, different kind of speed gates. We have the blaze pods for reaction oh, yeah. time. We have VBT. <clears throat> yeah. So what do you see as something that excites you in, in all these places you visit as, like, the next phase and kind of, like, technologically... Or just not even technological, like there's nothing real technological about a slam board, but the next thing that'll kind of take training to the next level. I think it's not even a piece of equipment. I think it's and like there's a there's a heap of people out there like yourself, Bryce, um, Dan down in Miami that just really want to drive education out there to today's youth, which will change the way we can do stuff. So that's what excites me the most. Like it's if we can change the education or change people's perspective around certain equipment and certain movements, then I think we'll see like a huge different in a huge difference made to like young athletes and, and how they play sport and not just young athletes, but everyone in general. So even people like yourself that have got, you know, like you've kind of proven yourself in the industry, same as Mark Bell, the same as that, you know, like they make it Mark Bell is nothing like me. They make it cool to stand stand on a slam board or, you know, there's 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 certain people that will just go, shit. Mark, Mark Loblon is using a slam board. I'll, I'll get a slam board. I'll train on a slam board. But it's the education that goes with it. And I think, like I said, there's three or four guys that I've met when I've travelled around. And I've, well, I think this is probably the third month. Yeah, this will probably be about three, three and a half months this year that I've spent in the US. Wow. You should move Holy here. shit. We, took, we might. <coughs> we won't, won't rule it out. Tennessee, man. Yeah. 
Just, Welcome. just uh, you know, you just you got to come here. You got to love guns. You got to love country. Got to go to church once in a while. I'm Jewish, which is weird. Um, <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah, I mean, it's yeah, it's it's fa- f- fascinating. You're right. It's education. Yeah. I, well, I mean, if you could have the coolest toy, but it doesn't mean you can coach. It's no, that's what I mean. It's I. I always tell people it's. I mean, crap. If you Mark, you were at my old gym. Oh yeah. I didn't have nice things. You had it was nice to me or squat I mean, it's ni- it was nice to me. But Show me a power cage and some turf. I'm happy. But if you compare me to, you know, we'll just say other people in the area right now. You can have look. Them- I promised you I wouldn't talk shit about D1, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> if you want to talk shit about that cookie cutter program, it's not going to be me. Okay. I, said, no, I, said I am not going to say anything bad about D1. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So I like lawsuit in three, <laughs> two. But well, I, it's, it's coming. And Come I'm at saying, me, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying for anyone, it can be the whole goddamn country. I don't really care. The whole point it's not what you have in the room. It's who is doing it and what the thought process and mind that is behind it. Mm-hmm. And I I tell that to everyone. You walk in right now. We don't have our own place, but yet I still know I. Well, outthink, outsmart everyone I go against. There's no doubt in my mind. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, like my ment- uh, my mentorship was done with minimalist equipment. So, <clears throat> you know, I-, I can I can train an entire team with mini bands and hurdles, and be pretty damn efficient at it. Yeah, I mean, and, look at what and we- a sample. Yeah, no, and a sample. I mean, uh, well, I mean some some teams like in Europe. So, um, one of my mentors, her name is Nicole Rodriguez, Coach Nicole, and she had to train a soccer team in the in Europe, and they're old school. They would not let her use weights. So she would literally go out there with a bag of mini bands and yeah. hurdles, and, and an hour session made but, it work. I mean, look what we went over today. What are the, the three things we went over and you used? Mini bands, mini hurdles, and slant. Why? Because that's all you need. And that's literally for injury prevention. Yes, because if you're injured, it doesn't matter how strong you yeah. are. And that's like the whole point, going back to what you said with coaches – just being uneducated, you don't need a lot of shit to do no. really good at your job. No. Like, especially when it comes to injury prevention, and, you know, are we going to be able to prevent every single injury? No. But can you minimize in, you know, any, any of that? Absolutely. By using literally three simple things. Bands, mini bands, hurdles, sideboard. Yeah. And we went over it all today. We want to get, get kids faster. You know what you do? You sprint. It's not that hard. No, and well, you know, the funny thing is, it's probably the best strength exercise you can do for your legs. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we work in a lot of sprints. We do. That's why I can't wait to have that turf. Oh, don't tease me. <laughs> don't tease so, me. so moving forward, just let you know, we, um, he said, like, he came out here. So we actually do fulfillment. Um, Tiger Fitness, we have uh, Vorlo... Um, Vorlo 3PL basically which is the third party logistics so we handle the shipping receiving and all that which just makes things easier on him so looking back is there anything you would have done different in your business building it um, probably, probably not but the biggest part biggest part has been able to scale um, in ways and means that we had to um, mm-hmm. you know when there's a big boom you, you've got to scale enough so that the customer is not waiting four or five weeks for their product mm-hmm. Um, you know, but then what comes on the other end of that when it drops off? What do you do with your staff? What do you do with your machines? What do you do with all that? So, um, I probably wouldn't do it any different. I probably would have marketed earlier, but at the same time, we were so busy, we didn't need to market. You know, so we wouldn't have been able to keep up if we were marketing. So there's just you're always learning, you're always making mistakes um, and learning from the mistakes. But again, like I said, I, I come out and I talk to you, and yeah, we talk about slam boards a little bit or a lot, but at the end of the day, I still pick your brain about business um and i think that no matter what you guys mark bell yourself there's a heap out here that have been super successful in the industry there's if you can take a little bit out of every single person and learn off what they've done and what they've been through and what pain they've had and what they haven't um it's only going to make it easier so probably wouldn't do too much different i love being in, in control of our own manufacturing i think like if if we didn't have our own manufacturing down packed Probably wouldn't have a business now if I, was yeah. on, if I was relying on someone else through COVID and stuff like that. So oh, my God, yeah. That's probably been a, a godsend to do that. Um, but again, and then we can wind it up and wind it down whenever we want. But 
Um, yeah, I'd probably just have a warehouse over here and start manufacturing a bit quicker. But like I said, it's just we've been too busy to be able to do it. So in the next six to 12 months, we'll have it down packed. It's crazy how it's kind of blown up. I mean, you had the whole like knee health movement, right? And then it was like a lot of it was repurposed though. <clears throat> Slampboard was kind of new. Like people were trying to take credit for reverse slide drags. You know, it's like we've been, do I have videos of me doing that in the. I've been doing that since I had my first knee surgery like 15 years ago. Well, and I have, I have videos of me doing lateral sled drags. You know, at the end of the day, I it's mean, all it's recycled. Pre it's pretty common sense. You, you walk forward all the time. So go you got to go backwards. And also if you're in a sport, like let's say you're a defensive back in football, you have to be able to run backwards. Or if you're a center back in soccer and or whatever, everybody needs to backpedal in some, some thank form. Thank you. And in wrestling, you need to step back to avoid a, a single leg takedown. Yep. So what we're seeing is creative marketing. Uh, you know, we've had it. I mean, we, we, we see it all the time. Like the other day, I'm like, hey, here's, here's why I like the reverse sled drag. They're like, oh, you're copying knees over toes guy. I'm like, no, no. They've literally, they have books on this from like the 40s. Yeah. Like they have that. So it's like, but I'm really happy that it's getting out there. I don't care how the message gets out, whether it's Ben at knees over toes guy, whether it's Mark Bell, whether it's Stan Efforting, whoever the hell it is, you know, I don't care if they take credit for it. At the end of the day, this is stuff <clears throat> when you're in the strength community, like me and Bryce, you know, you go to these lectures, you go to these seminars, you go to these, you know, different kind of certification things and different, you know, different, or, or we just get together like the ISSN or whatever <clears throat> you go there and everybody there knows that this shit's been done forever. We've been using it forever. But we might not have the platform or the marketing prowess to be able to get it out there. I mean, dude, I still have people to this day think that I created the Goblet Squad. I shit you not. Because in 2015, Dr. Stu in, in Elgin, Illinois, because I, I had some injuries and I couldn't back squat correctly, he had me doing Goblet Squats. So people are like, man, you know, because of you, I'm doing goblet squats. Thanks for bringing those to us. I'm like, yeah, goblet squats kind of came before regular squats. They've been around for literally probably the first thing anyone ever did and had no idea what they it were doing. It was probably it. one it of was, the first resistance exercises there was. I was going to say something completely different, but yeah. I mean, think about it. You hold something and you squat. It's probably the most primal thing you can do. Absolutely. So, <laughs> but it's really funny because I had a YouTube channel that was big. And I'm like, dude, I'm doing these. And I put it in one of my trainers that I wrote. And people actually thought I created the goblet squat. I didn't. I know. You don't want to take credit for it? No, no, I'm not going to take credit for that because there's some guy out there who's dead. And that was like his thing, man. He's like, yep, this is my shit. And now he's like rolling over in his grave like, who's this loud, short motherfucker taking credit for my goblet squat? Like, there's certain things that were invented like jm blakely had the jm press and which is basically a tricep tricep um extensions bench press combo mm -hmm. you know um but what's fascinating is with with something like the slant board it's crazy because we're in the gym today and first thing me and bryce do we're on separate slant boards is we're trying to create exercises we're like if i do this can i do this and then i saw you the other day bouncing off from one slant board to the other and that's crazy yeah, well, I mean, again, it's it's all about just having a look at what we've got and innovating what we can off that. I think, you know, there's always going to be people that copy what you do. But if you can keep innovating and keep coming up with new stuff that's going to be beneficial to others, you always stay ahead of the game. So I think that's that's what's most important. Yeah, um, I just look at everything from recovery and how that's kind of progressed to training modalities and methodologies that have kind of progressed – and I'm thinking back to when we used to get injured and we used to ice injuries oh. and it just kind of one time I, I almost got kicked out of a, um, the Midwest turn Midwest cup in Illinois. So Campton was putting it on. I was a coach at Campton <clears throat> and, uh, Atletico, you know, those guys. Yes. Atletico sucks. Don't oh, hire shit. them. I remember this. They're, they're horrible. Um, so we brought them on, um, as kind of like, uh, an adjunct to Campton to help us out. I was in the meeting, you know, Scotty was running the club. He's in Tennessee now. It was to cover asses. <clears throat> yeah. 
of course, of course, we don't want to deal with concussions and shit, right? So, um, so he's like, Mark, you got to be at this meeting. I'm like, cool. First day I asked him, so you know who Gary Rinal is? He's the guy who wrote the book Iced. Um, Kelly Sturette's big, uh, they're big friends with Sturette. So Gary and I became good friends over the years. And Gary is literally called the anti-Iceman. He got the guy who created Rice to write his foreword in his book saying that Rice is wrong. So the guy who created icing injuries is literally like, oh, my bad. My bad. I slowed down everybody's recovery for the last 10 decades. So anyway, so, so first thing I asked, I asked the guy who was in charge of the Atletico in uh, St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm like, bro, if our player gets injured, do you ice them? He's like, no, we don't believe in ice. Cool. So we're at this tournament and the kid didn't even get it really an out. It was like he got cleated or something in his shin. He got an owie. It was an owie. So first thing, this doctor comes over with ice. I said, what are you doing? He said, and I was there just assistant. I wasn't the coach coach. I was the assistant coach. So I had time to mess with doctors. He's like, I'm about to ice him. I'm like, no, you're not. He said, yes, I am. This is how you, this is what you do when people get injured. I'm like, in the 1940s, not now. You put that ice near my kid's legs. We're going to have a problem. And then he goes like, well, I'm a doctor. What are you? I'm like, I'm the guy who's going to kick your ass. If you put that ice near my player. So long story short, you know, we're, we're causing a ruckus, right? So I'm like, this motherfucker right here. I said, look, I said, you're wearing an athletic shirt. He's like, yeah, but they outsource us. And I believe in icing. I said, well, the guy who I'm assuming is paying your tab for the day said that you guys want nice. I'm like, I don't care what the club director says. That ice goes anywhere near my kid's legs. We're fighting. And so at that point, you know, club director comes over and the kid's like, just, just, just put the ice on me. Just shut the fuck up. Right. And I'm like, finally, I'm like, you know, I'm like, so I called to the guy afterwards. Hey man, how'd it go? I lit him up. And to this day, I'm like, dude, I'm like, you guys are just any, any physical therapist, trainer, or medical professional who tells you to ice an injury is a fucking moron at this point. Cannot keep up with data. It's it's literally the dumbest fucking person in their profession. If you still believe that icing an injury is the way to go. You know when's a good time to ice? When your arm gets cut off and you're trying to stop circulation. Think about it. When your arm gets cut off, you're trying to stop circulation. So you ice it. So if if I'm injured, and I want to get better is the right way to do things to stop it or to let your body heal. There's never, ever, ever a situation unless it's pain mitigation where icing is the answer ever. Athletico, I'm talking to you. Seriously, and I see it all the time. First thing at my daughter's high school. Yes, I'm calling out the trainers at Ravenwood High School. First thing y'all do is bring out ice. Guys, it's a fucking two-minute Google search. Mark Bell's done podcasts on it. Um, Knees Over Toes guy did, did podcasts on it. Um, I even think fucking Carnival Sean Baker's done pop. He was because he was an orthopedic surgeon. Dude, literally, it's not even a question anymore. Usually, like I could say, well, there still needs to be more data. Now it's like, bro, the guy who invented it is like, whoops. And you dumbasses are still hurting kids. I'm sorry, that's why I get so passionate. Because of your ignorance, kids are being hurt longer. And that upsets the living fuck out of me. You're, sa- you're making kids injured longer. Think about it. Do work. If you're a physical therapist or you're a doctor or you're a trainer, it's your job to keep up on current data on research so you can help not hurt your athletes. That's all I got to say about that. It just makes me so furious because everywhere I go, they got that goddamn ice maker. I'm mad. You're mad. And it's I just right. pissed off my daughter's high school. <laughs> That's a good call, Abba. No, no, they do it. They all do it. All the coaches yeah. do it. All the soccer coaches. Anybody got ice? I'm like, why? Are you fucking thirsty? Are you making a margarita? Like, why do you need ice? It's like, oh, kids injured. Let's have a drink. Ha! So I'm going to make a margarita. And so to combat that, what would you do in order to help them heal better or recover better from that in- so-called injury? Instead of icing, what would you specifically do? 
So immediately you want to, I mean, assuming it's not broken. We're just trying to give as much information as possible to help. No. So immediately you want to test it out. Honestly, at that point, it's really nothing. Like if you're on the field and, and you have someone who's really injured, you move through it, you might want to mobilize, you might want to give it some massage, some light massage, get it, get it moving. The key is to get it moving as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, keep going. I'll let you do your thing. Keep it, get it moving as soon as possible. I do like stim units. I love my Mark Pro. Um, I don't know if it still works. I don't get paid by them or anything, but I used to have a coupon code lowbliner, markpro.com. So when I used to, I have three, but I, I can only find one because I've lent them out so many times that I have no clue where they are. You know, because I was about to lend it out the other day, yeah. but I couldn't find it. Yeah, so I, I have keep one, one that I use myself because I'm old and I always get injured. But the other one's probably somewhere in Illinois and the other one's probably somewhere in Tennessee. And but every time a kid got injured, I'm like, have your parents stop by my house on the way home. I'm going to call my wife. She'll have the Mark Pro ready. There's a fresh pair of pads for you. So I've literally rent out. Re- it's I've, true. I've, it's I, 100% true. I've lent out my Mark Pro at least a hundred times. Now, I, what what other modalities along with that is that? Who would we just? Well, I mean, flossing is another way. I know yeah. Colton and uh, Colton Anderson in in Illinois is a big fan of I of um yeah. And if you don't of, of flossing, yeah. I mean, look up everything. Uh, what is that? Kelly Starr put out for the Ready State. <clears throat> he, you can literally floss and tack anything. Yeah, flossing. Um, I love massage. I love massage. Um, if you want to get really funky where I have no real data beyond um, ulcers and diabetics, but that's where I go with it. Um, I have a red light unit. It's right over there by Bryce, yep. right on the wall. Um, red light therapy. Um, that would be near red. Far red is what you find in saunas. Near red are actually lights. And then, um, uh, I'm oh. not sure if they work, though, but they can't hurt. Like when, when do you remember Drew? Yeah. Drew Dodson? Yeah. So when he, when he hurt his back... Um, his therapist told him to get a red light. So he had a good one. He had a good PT and, um, surprised he gave it back. Yeah. His dad's like, Kip called me. He's like, Hey, do you have a red light? I'm like, yeah, done. Come over. Katie's like, you've already lost like $800 in Mark pros. I'm like, just give him the fucking light. Well, no, uh, what about, uh, Donnie Thompson and body tempering? So I like, so basically what I look at body tempering is, is passive foam rolling. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, so when I used to have back issues, I saw my wife take, cause I have a 50 pound tempering tool, a rogue one. And my wife would take it 50 pounds, not enough. So mm-hmm. she will literally put her whole body weight and kind of work it into my lower yeah. back, what, into I, my hip. I like tempering tools. You just need, I know Colton when uh, my, my nephew, Jane, who's on a full ride to Kansas state for baseball. Uh, Colton used to have like 800 pounds on the kid's hamstrings. Remember that his Instagram? Yeah. What, uh, yeah. <clears throat> What is Donnie's like biggest weight called? It has some absurd name. Shit, he has the fat bells. Um, it's it's something. I, I don't know if you but, can understand what the hell that man's speaking English. I can't understand a word he's saying. It's playing on Donnie. Um, no, I think body tempering is great. Like, I mean, you should visit Donnie. Donnie's good peeps, man. Yeah. Um, I mean, what other modalities <laughs> have you used that you thought actually work? I mean, that's pretty much that. <clears throat> and then just getting onto the. So when I strain my pec. This was the fourth or fifth time, which, by the way, I've, I've had no issues benching now. Um, it was every time I get over 450, I strain my pec. Yeah. I mean, well, shit. Sorry to get off topic. After you have the injury. So first, you go thing to I did, first thing I did, I went, I made sure it wasn't, you could, I don't recommend doing this, but I could tell if my pec's torn or strained by if it rolls up. So when it didn't turn black and blue, it didn't roll up. I'm like, I got this. So Graston, I had um, oh, I had a good friend of mine do Graston on it, That's and then first thing I did is I went to the gym, and I did pec deck flies. I just got the stretch range yeah. of motion. I started with one plate. By the time I was on the whole stack, I knew I was recovering. five plates. Well, I mean, you know, it goes. It, there's like twenty of them, right? It's the selectorized. I know. So I went one. I was like, that yeah, sucks. So then I went boom, 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 and over the course, I did it every day, and over the course of two weeks, I was fully healed. But I also used the Mark Pro, I used Graston, and I used um, a little a self massage. You know, just going yeah. in and just rubbing it. I rubbing mean, it. what about? And I know um, we've, we've talked about this in person. What about you have the injury? You do all those. You go to PT. Nothing changes. We know that. Mm-hmm. What do you do after that? Hire us. There you go. I mean, that's we had. 
one of one of my favorite athletes, and I say that about every athlete. So sorry, hey, you're not gonna be able to pick who it is. But she, if she watched this, she would know. Hopefully, she doesn't watch my channel. It gets a bit raunchy at times. Uh, no, I'm just playing. This channel is actually very clean, um, except for the ones on bodybuilding, because bodybuilding they do a lot of drugs in bodybuilding. So anyway, so like, you know, she came in and a basketball player and couldn't no uh, three months of three months of PT, three, three months. Yep, and prelude. Couldn't do an overhead press, couldn't do a push-up, couldn't do any kind of inverted row, dumbbell row, any anything horizontal, pull, or press. After a week, fully functional, 100% yeah. recovery. And can, and can do what she's supposed to do with zero pain. We have, uh, Bryce and I have a lot of things in our toolbox. Wait, wait, wait. That was only in eight weeks. <laughs> yeah, that was, well, that was, she did three I, months with them. And within like a week. A it week. Was, yeah. It was a week. So and then weeks full. Mm. When, there, when there's an injured person, what will generally happen is if we have a team with two injured people, which is generally normal, there's going to be ouchies during the season. Um, and stupid things, like we have one girl with a broken foot because she was playing pickup basketball with her male cousin. You know? And so, <clears throat> so when we have an ouchie, or what we used to call when I played for a hurdy, you know, what will happen is Bryce will go and train the big group, and I'll break off with the injured people, and that way I'm able to address their injuries. Cause like I said, when I was coaching 50 to 60 kids at a time at Ravenwood, I was unable to give them that personalized attention. Yeah. So I'd have kids come in with injuries. I'm like, uh, goblet squat. Yeah. But, but, and I got 45 minutes, but that's it, a minute a person, right? Like shit. But the other part of this is I'd say like, unless you have surgery, like you're, you're out for an extended time. Yeah. But if you don't, doesn't mean you can't stop lifting. There are like, if your ankle's hurt, put your foot up. You can bench. You can still do multiple different leg exercises. They might be isolated, not perfect, but it doesn't mean you can't stop. You see my brother after he tore his bicep? Dude was, dude was like the single arm bench pressing champion. He was doing barbell, single arm. Like the like just real <laughs> overhand grip or like the split grip you can do with your hand to make a neutral? No, he was just this. Oh, my my brother, my he, every day was leg day, you know. And he came back, and his bicep was, and then he was able to do the um, occlusion training too, the BFR. Yep. So, oh shit, that's another modality. There you go. Yeah, BFR is another thing you do for injuries. Depends on the area. It's really hard to do it for like a pec. Yeah, I mean but, legs. But if you, yeah, I mean legs. If you, uh, if you injure a knee, but I mean, I look at BFR as kind of like flossing while training. You know, it's like yeah, it's a lot of. Flossing hurts. Oh, Colton terrible. did that on Cami once, and she was it's like, terrible. Because you got to squat with that thing, like, pressing down on. Yep. Oh, yeah. There's a hundred different ways to do it. And if you don't know what that is, go look up Supple Leopard. Go look up Ready State. They have all of it. Yeah, I think Sturette's probably the leader in that right now. 100%. You? Absolutely. I've read Supple Leopard. I haven't read anything that he just made Ready State. I haven't read anything, but he's definitely the leader. I don't think there's anyone that can compare to him. No. He's the guy. Yeah. He's just the guy. Like, it is, some people are just really good at what they do. And like the Slamport guy. <clears throat> yeah. Speaking of which, man, where can they, um, where can they find you? And uh, obviously you have an Instagram, all that good stuff. Well, finally has an Instagram. He's had yeah. one for a while. Really? I've been there for a while now. Nah, Instagram, just at Slamport guy. And um, our website's just uh, slamportguy.com. Yes. To check out the products. Too easy, too easy. And of course, we will be carrying the Slamport at tigerfitness.com and um, to sign off here. This is a very special episode. Um, I'd like to get more people here. That would be, it's way better yeah, it'd be than that Zoom bullshit. I mean, we gotta go get one. Yeah, and yeah. We, need to, we need to get more bars. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell. If you're on YouTube, if you're on Spotify, be sure to share it. Um, if you're on any of the Apple podcasts or anywhere else this thing goes, you know, be sure to share this. Share the video, share the wealth, share the knowledge. We appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I used to have to go through dozens of bottles of vitamins, of supplements, just to get what I need. Look, I'm busy. I'm running multiple businesses. I'm coaching. I'm a professional bodybuilder getting ready for my first pro show. I don't have time to sit there and do all that. I got to go. I'm on the go all the time. That is why I created MTS Nutrition Immortal. 
Here's how they look. This, all it takes, this replaces dozens of bottles of supplements. So let me tell you exactly what this has. It has probiotics, greens, liver detox, joint support, cardiovascular support, and the most complete multivitamin, multi-mineral supplement ever created. If you have a busy life or you simply want more time to do the things you love and be able to travel by just taking one simple little pack with you, Immortals for you.